Welcome back to County Connection. I'm Jason Gray, and I'm sitting down today with Stuart Burnham from the Campbell County Fire Department. And it's November, and November means Thanksgiving, and the Thanksgiving means a lot of cooking. And I understand we're going to talk about cooking safety today. Yeah, Jason, thanks for having me in today. Uh, Thanksgiving, it's a, it's a joyous time of the year. It's an opportunity for families to gather together and uh, share, share good food and hopefully make some good memories. Uh, and with that, uh, it's important that we want people to have a good time and to be safe. And so with that, I brought in, there's a couple references that I brought with me. They're from the National Fire Protection Association and it provides, or the NFPA, and they provide safety tips. And it's one of their PSAs that they've put out. Uh, this one's over Thanksgiving safety. Uh, the main part of the, the announcement is based around um, being present in the moment. Uh, the leading cause of fires around Thanksgiving are revolving around kitchen safety and cooking. And most of the time it is due to unattended cooking. Oh, and okay. So when you have a lot of people over and there's a lot of excitement in the house, it's easy to set it and forget it. Uh, that is not a good practice, especially if you want your food to turn out uh, tasting good and you want to be safe. So they recommend that you're present, you understand what you're cooking, what the needs are time-wise, and that you can plan on being not only home but in the kitchen during that time of cooking. Also, to kind of set those rules with the kids to try and keep them out of the areas so nobody trips or falls. Um, kids like to grab onto cords and whatever they can find on the counter. So it's just trying to be mindful and pick up as you're cooking so that way everybody can be as safe as possible. You can lower those risks as much as you can. The other part uh, is the um, matches and lighters keeping those out of oh, reach sure. from the kids if you're using them to ignite your grill or if you are uh, frying your turkey and you need to light the uh, the igniter the cooking appliance to do that so just making sure that uh, all the tools are put away and they're and they're kept clean and out of the reach of children all right uh, so if somebody does in the worst case have a cooking fire what do they need to do, right? Like a grease fire you can't put out with water. Yeah, so we recommend having methods in place to where you can smother the fire. Oftentimes sure. that's just as, as simple as having a lid or a plate present where you can put right over the pot or the pan and that will extinguish it. It'll take the oxygen away from it. Sure. If you need to, you can, uh, we also recommend having fire extinguishers in your kitchen as well so that you can use that to put it out. Obviously, it's not going to taste very well afterwards, but it's better than having any damage to any more damage to your house or a, a safety risk to the other people in the house. I mean, obviously, it's already been on fire, so I think at that point, safe, uh, good taste is is out out regardless of what method you use to uh, <laughs> extinguish it. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, that kind of leads me into the next topic that I wanted to talk about, and that's with uh, turkey frying. And uh, we, I've got some safety tips here that I would just want to share, some recommendations. So the average turkey fryer uses about five gallons of oil at 350 degrees. Um, each year, uh, people that are frying turkeys, there's, uh, on average, there's five deaths, 60 injuries, over 900 house fires, and an estimated cost of $15 million in property damage. Just from frying? Just from turkey frying. Oh so gosh. it is definitely a hazard that uh, we need to account for, that we want people to be aware of. It tastes great, and most of the time it goes smoothly, but there are some specific guidelines that I would like to share for the turkey frying. I'm just going to read right off the, the list. The first tip is if a fire does start with the turkey frying, do not use water to right. put it out. Uh, to your point earlier, that is a hazard in the kitchen and it's exponentially so when you have that much oil and at that temperature. So the first part is we want to thaw the turkey and completely dry it. That lessens the, the chance oh, of that sure. water reacting with the oil. And it also, from a taste perspective, it helps for the cooking and cooking evenly. 
so you don't have as many complications there. You want to place the fryer in an open area, out away from um, a, the, the walls of the buildings. If you can, we don't want to do it in the kitchen or in a garage. Even if it's cold, we want to take it outside and create that distance away from anything that could be lit on fire. Another point to remember is um, your propane tanks that are used for it. Try and put it upwind so that way when it's cooking and if there is a breeze, it's not oh. blowing all that heat onto the hose right. and onto the uh, propane tank itself. So those are a couple things that, that, that pertain to location and considerations that you should have. Also, um, ensure that when you put the pot on there, on the cooker, um, that it is centered. If you get it off to one side or the other, you might not be heating it up as, as much as you want. It might not be as efficient as it should be. And that cre can create some issues as well. Obviously, there's a heat hazard above the top of the burner. So try and center up that pod as best as you can. The next one is follow the manufacturer's instructions to, for how much oil to use. Usually when you're going to do it, there should be a recipe there. There should be uh, manufacturer's instructions. And so follow those. They have those instructions in place for people that maybe aren't familiar with that. And they're just good reminders, especially depending on what utensils, what utilities you're using and to cook with. Sure. The next one is check the oil temperature often. You don't want it to get too hot. That goes back to being present when you're cooking and being there to check the oil temperature. If you need to adjust the burner, then you can do that. So that way, not only is it you're cooking it properly, but you're also doing so safely and not creating another hazard. If you notice any smoke coming from the pot, turn off the burner immediately. Give it some space and some time to cool down before you do anything else. That's usually your first indication that it's gotten too hot and there's an elevated risk there. Lift and lower the cooked food slowly to reduce splatter and avoid burns. I think we've all been in the kitchen and we've cooked and we've, had, we've felt those splatters of grease on us and it's uncomfortable when you're frying a turkey and you have that much oil present there is a big risk there to get burned. So as slow and as gentle as you can is best. Also, we will, it'll help with the cleanup so you're not having as much stuff to clean up off from the ground around the burner. Sure. And then 10, as a precaution, cover any bare skin when adding or removing food. So if you can cook with long sleeves on or you have the longer gloves that are sometimes provided in the kits, uh, we. We definitely recommend using that as well to lessen the risk of getting burned. Out of all the tips that I've shared, the important thing is to be present in the moment, um, focus on what you're doing, and it will help lessen the risk and make your food taste better. All right, yeah, and that's, I think, the most important thing about Thanksgiving is to, to get to the end of the day with tasty food safely. Making good memories. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, is there anything else for November? Uh, there is no other specific items I wanted to share. Just wanted to encourage people as the weather changes to drive safely, slow down, increase your following distances, and have a safe holiday season. All right, well, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.